Hey folks, RKBA for Life here, and we're going to be reviewing not so much the M9 itself, but we're going to talk about some of the myths and I guess you could say legends that have built up around this device. Um, the piece has been around in military service since 1985, but even in that short period of time between then and now, compared to the 1911, there's been a lot of things and concepts that people have said about the gun which either don't apply or just don't make any sense, especially with the military right now contemplating a new gun, which they seem to do almost every year anyway, and then nothing really comes of it. So uh, making this video, because there's a lot of videos from others on YouTube and a lot of proclaimed gun experts who say that this pistol is got issues or this is wrong or the polymer parts are bad or just things about it that are just not necessarily um, accurate with the context. And that's what we're going to deal with now. Um, first thing we're going to do, you can see this just a red snap cap in there, nothing in the chamber. So we're going to talk about today is a couple of things. One, the polymer parts on the piece. Uh, a lot of folks have said that the uh, Beretta's choice of polymer parts, notably the guide rod right there. So if you can get a good shot of that. Um, Beretta's use of the guide rod and the trigger and the safety, the left side of it, that is, being polymer. Um, folks have said that that is a bad choice on their part, which is odd for a couple of reasons. Um, almost every reviewer that I've seen about this device, this weapon, um, has said that it is a bad thing, that the parts are polymer and that Beretta is trying to cheap it out, which I can understand why someone would think that if they were completely, they didn't have any association with the military, I could totally understand why they would think that. But in practice, that stuff actually is a benefit, and I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, I came to understand all this when I was active duty. I just happened to be in a position where I learned a lot from people that were connected with the M9. Um, basically, uh, when I was stationed at my last base, I had to sign my carry piece in and sign it out of the base armory every time I wanted to leave the base to conceal carry. So every time I came on base, I'd have to sign it in. Every time I came off base, I'd have to sign it out. And that was the first thing I did before leaving and the first thing I did when I came back. So no stopping at the commissary or the BX to get anything on the way to the police station. The police station was literally the first place I'd had to go. So as you can imagine, almost every day I did anything off post. I had to stop by the police station. So as a consequence, even though my primary job in the military had nothing directly to do with this piece, I would have been issued one if I'd gone overseas, but I didn't deploy. So basically everything I know about this gun came from me essentially hanging out with the security forces armory guys over a course of, you know, a couple of years before I, I got out. So, um, Long story short, I learned a lot about this piece that most folks, even in the military, to say nothing about my job category, just don't understand. And that even applies to a lot of civilians who look at the whole M9 from the outside in and assume that the military is using substandard equipment when really it's just substandard military maintenance. That's the problem. Um, first thing we're going to talk about, though, is about the polymer parts. So the reason... Beretta went to these is because in the case of the guide rod, what was happening is overseas the barrel and the guide rod, if you notice right there, um, most um, pieces you'll generally see that the guide rod and the barrel aren't exactly aligned, but because the M9 uses a slightly longer barrel than most handguns when it's in battery, what happens is the uh, basically if the pistol is ever dropped on the, the muzzle, the first thing it's going to hit is the barrel and the guide rod. And if this part's metal, if it gets bent, it stays bent. And then uh, basically you can't manipulate the gun from there. It's basically tangle uniform. So to take care of that problem, I made it out of polymer. So if it's ever bent, it'll return to shape instead of staying bent when it gets impacted. The other benefit to the polymer guide rod is that it is fluted. So what happens is, um, basically, if there's any dirt, grime, debris, whatnot on the guide rod, okay, the flutes will help push it out of the way of the action so that the, the piece is not seized if it ever encounters any 
goop or crap on that guide rod. So that's actually a functional benefit too, um, which Wilson Combat actually retains in their metal guide rods. Those Their metal ones have the fluted parts in them. So um, that's actually a functional improvement, which a lot of folks seem to overlook when they discuss this gun. They think it's the Beretta being cheap, but in point of fact, it's actually a functional benefit. Just like the trigger, which on almost every new Beretta now is polymer coated. The trigger itself is metal, but the trigger is covered with polymer, as is the left-sided safety. And the reason for that is, if you see an old military M9, you'll notice that generally the two parts that will be guaranteedly worn out will be the trigger and the left side safety. And the reason for that is those are the two most frequently used controls on the gun. So what will happen is if you dry fire or shoot a traditionally blued part on those guns, what will generally happen is this will be worn completely to the bare metal and the trigger will be too. So you have a black gun, a brunette and finished black gun, which will have silver trigger and a silver left side safety, which means your gun's basically just a two-tone piece. And then to fix it, you have to take it completely apart, take the trigger print out, take the slide completely apart, change your safety, change your trigger, and if it's metal finished, in a few thousand rounds, you're right back to square one. Whereas with the polymer, this won't wear out. I mean, I guess in theory you could possibly wear it all the way down to the main trigger, but you'd have to shoot more often than Jerry Micklick to make that happen. So um, I don't think any sane human being is going to be able to pull off that job. And with these two parts being polymer coated, they're going to stay the same color as the gun basically throughout the life of the piece. And in that way you don't have to continually keep changing these parts um, whenever the finish gets worn right off. So um, definitely little actual functional improvements and um, you know and if you're the kind of person that really likes the aesthetics of the metal guide rod I don't think you'd necessarily be in trouble functionally. I just think that personally I prefer to leave it the way it is because Beretta in their wisdom has changed that for a good reason and it's a reason that I was able to confirm just in conversation with the nice armory folks at the last Air Force Base I was stationed at. The other thing is um, we're going to talk about too about the M9 and how the military's maintenance is just lackluster resulting in problems for this gun. Um, a lot of veterans don't have nice things to say about this this piece because what generally happens is the military just does not maintain these guns at all. I mean, the individual user might clean them, but in terms of changing recoil springs, changing, um, you know, small parts, trigger return springs, slide stop levers, things that just generally wear out when you use guns heavily, that just never happens. And the military stuff is just not replaced frequently when things are changed. They mix and max parts, so you'll have... Instead of buying new parts and putting them in the same piece, you'll have uh, some sort of weird Franken Beretta where you'll have the slide from a 1985 model, a frame from a 1992 model, a locking block from a different gun that's got 50,000 rounds on it, and it's just an assortment of just stuff basically thrown together. Um, and when you treat a pistol like that, it doesn't matter who makes it, it ain't going to run well. If you take an HK and you throw parts at random from different guns that have been shot at different times, have been maintained in different ways, um, it's probably not going to work very well. And that's what generally happens with a lot of vets. They get issued a piece that doesn't work or it's just malfunctioning and doesn't work well because of the military's, again, lackluster maintenance process. And then what happens when they come back here stateside, they see one of these in the gun store and it's automatically, oh, God, Beretta's all junk. Well, the ones that you get in the gun shop are obviously brand new. They're taken care of. They're made nice. And anybody who spends their own money for a pistol is going to treat it significantly better than a military arms room where it's just another line item that they have to check off on a box, you know. Um, the one that I handled when I was active duty, uh, the military one was in so bad of a shape that um, I could just tilt the gun like this and the gun went into battery. Okay, that's how bad of a shape it was. When I shook it, you know, when I shake this gun, it, it ain't, there's almost no sound. The only thing you're hearing is the sound of, like, the magazine base plate. And there's just there's no there's nothing there's no sh like marine gaze going on there's no shaking when I shook the military one um, that that thing sounded like I don't know like a marine gay just just cha 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 all over the place stuff just moving around and shaking and rattling and it, it was just bad it was just in bad shape um, 
If I took that thing to a pawn shop and tried to get money for it, they'd laugh me right out the front door. That's how bad of a shape they're in. And, um, you know, unfortunately, because of this really inattention to handguns that the military's got going on right now, it wouldn't matter what the troops were issued. We could be issued these, we could have Glocks, HKs, wouldn't matter. Because at the end of the day, the, the military just does not maintain handguns well. And when that happens... It, you, you just it's just not going to be a good story. It's not going to end well. And that's the problems that we're facing right now in terms of, you know, function and, and everything like that. Plus the fact that we don't really train troops on this gun. You've got people being sent to deployments who actually have no handgun training in this model whatsoever. So combine those two issues and you have the root of why we have so many issues with the Beretta. So personally, I think it's an underrated gun. Um, you know, I think it's definitely... A great choice for anybody looking at a quality 9mm and, um, you know, as a, somebody who served active duty and had some exposure to the military ones, I would say don't let anyone's naysaying about this gun get to you. Um, definitely give it a shot if you're shopping for a 9mm, check it out. Because, um, again, a lot of vendors are going to say that this is a, a crummy pistol and not to like it and everything like that, but that's all basically because they were handed a gun that was not maintained, not treated well, not docu not really maintained, and uh, the result, of course, is they got a gun that didn't work very well when they went overseas. So um, just understand that, especially if you get a veteran that doesn't like this pistol. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts on what I've shared today, feel free to put them in the respective areas on the site and i look forward to hearing from your feedback hope you guys are shooting safe and doing well out there y'all have yourselves a good one